Okay, today we're going to be doing this cute little bluebird sitting on a branch of blueberries. And this was originally a background print from a gel print from last week's session. And I'll just put the link up in the corner here if you would like to go and um, see how I did that. And if you want to do your own gel print first and then put this on top, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, I will have a printout for this if you um, belong to the members YouTube uh, channel, then um, this will be available for you as well. If you're interested in getting all of my printables and a longer videos of different uh, paintings that I've done that aren't on uh, YouTube for the public but just for members, you can check that out and I'll put, also put a link up here or you can press the join button down below and it'll give you all the information that you need. Alright, so get your paints ready and um, paintbrush. Uh, if you want to use this, you can always paste it onto an existing uh, canvas or a heavier page. I'm going to actually put it on this file folder when I'm done and it'll uh, be part of my July uh, file folder. So let's play with some of this I guess. We'll play with what we have here. We can always paint some leaves ourselves too. So I'm going to get a paint tray out and that looks about right there. We could go with that color. Um, there's burnt sienna. I think it's more of a coppery color. We could go with this color, maybe a little darker. Okay, so I'm going to take some of this and cayenne with a little bit of that cream, buttercream, I think it's called. Let's see. Yeah, buttercream. And some of these leaves. And we can add them here and there. And it doesn't even have to be that noticeable. Whatever you want to put on. You can vary the colors. this here so it would make a, the um, mask instead. So we could put a lighter color, so more of the um, buttercream in the mix. Maybe in the center here where the bird's going to be, it'll be a little lighter. And then just pounce off so it just gradually lightens. So you don't, you don't really want to have a sponge mark. having storms here. Quite a bit of rain. There. You could go darker on the bottom here too. You don't have to do it all light. You could go dark also. I'm going to put some dark brown. Let's see. 
Oh, it just says dark brown. <laughs> yeah, thanks for um, messaging me. <laughs> so I was looking for stuff, so it could have been a while that I would not have known I wasn't on. stuff so that it's different. Get rid of that white. Mix a little bit, with some different color combinations along the edge there. As you can see, I didn't realize that I had another blip in my internet and I painted the base coat of the bird in. <laughs> so we didn't really miss too much. Um, it's basically a fairly dark blue, indigo blue would do, um, and a sienna color, and then a real light peachy orange color in the center of his breast. So, um, after you've done that, what I've done is I've taken a little bit of blue and a little of white and mixed them together to make a lighter blue. And with a grainer brush, and that's a brush that has uh, uneven uh, bristles on the end, so they, it looks like a rake almost. Sometimes they're called a rake brush. And it's... Uh, the trick to using this brush is to have the right amount of water with your paint. If it's too thick, it will go on globby looking. And you want a nice fine line from those bristles so it looks like feathers. It's also good for hair or fur, that type of thing. Grass is another thing. So you're going to have to find the right consistency of water and paint. and I find it's always um, easier if you just practice on a spare piece of paper before you go ahead and do it on your painting. And it's a very light touch you should have with this brush. Um, too heavy a um, pressure and you will get more of a glob look. So practice it up and see what you can do with it. And if you don't have one of these brushes, you can also use a scruffy uh, bristle brush. So something that's not really fine edged, like a nice thin edge. You want something that's really old scruffy so it gives an uneven look. And again, that will depend on how much water versus um, paint that is applied to the bristles. So you play with it and see what you can do with your brush or whatever 
uh, type of brush you have. Now I'm going to do the uh, dark section of the sepia and it's just kind of a cayenne color. I believe it's called cayenne or you could use a sepia color or um, raw sienna with a little bit of cream added to it and that will work too. And again uh, applying it to my area and you have to make sure you're putting your strokes in the proper direction because the feathers grow in a certain direction and um, to give it that roundish look you need to be aware of how those feathers are laying so uh, get some reference photos if you have to and uh, notice how these feathers are in the breast area they do overlap each other as far as um, overlapping onto the blue wing and uh, the center part of his breast which is more of a creamy buff to a white color and I'll be, I'll be putting that in shortly but just slightly go over your other colored areas and also onto the branch area down below. Now I didn't do the branch on <laughs> on stream so um, I didn't notice that I was off until my branch was done but that again is very simple uh, grayish brown colors darker on the bottom and anywhere where it's crossing over each other it's always got a shadow cast on the bottom part um, do the branch first because you want to be able to uh, put some of these feathers over top of your branch so it'd be a whole lot easier doing that than trying to put in the branch around your feathers. Now don't worry if you get some blobby areas. See I've done some blobby areas there with the uh, lighter color and I'll just go back over that uh, once that's dry with some of the darker again. Uh, so if you know it takes a couple goes at it then that's fine. That's the nice thing about acrylic paint is you can keep adding those layers until you get it right. There's the uh, fixing up those areas so I just went over it again with some of the darker color, that cayenne color. So you can go back and forth uh, a lot of times it's best if you do that anyways because it gives uh, the uh, look of depth in the feathers or fur, whatever you're doing. This is the buff color that I'm going to be using. I'll also be putting a little bit of white, but the buff, um, I want to go over top of that orange area just a bit because that just shows how fluffy the bird is then. And it'll also integrate into that um, orangey color also. It just doesn't stop where the orange begins. It has to integrate just slightly into that um, orange part there. See, I'm just putting a few flicks in. Not a lot, but just a few. And there's a little bit on the sides and under the chin or the beak. And then make sure you get it over that branch too. The top of the head and um, just above it by the uh, beak is usually a little lighter looking because your light is hitting that first. So it'll always seem a little brighter in any bird. Okay, now I'm doing the blueberries and I started off with the end of my paintbrush but I found that it wasn't giving me a big enough circle and I had to dip my paintbrush 
quite often. So I took out a cotton swab instead because it'll hold mo more paint and it was a little bigger in diameter. So if you have cotton squ swabs, use those. They're great. And um, I also will vary the tone of them by dipping it in a little bit of white paint with the blue and uh, going back over some of these again. So, uh, that kind of gives it the effect of uh, the blueberries. They kind of have a film, a white film on them. Um, almost looks frosted and just by dipping your paintbrush that's already got the blue on it into a little bit of white will give you that same effect. So here I am putting that little bit of white in. See how it just gives it a little bit more interest? Gives it that uh, dusty look that they have and maybe a little bit of a highlight here and there. You don't have to do all of them. It's best to keep some dark. Vary the range of uh, color on them because that makes them more interesting. Okay, now I've um, put some of that cayenne and then dipped the very tip of my angled brush in a little bit of that cream and that gave me the two-tone leaves. And this kind of one-stroke painting for leaves. Uh, it's very handy for just a quick but very effective looking leaf and uh, you can do it with any color really. If you want to do green leaves you could do the um, olive green maybe with um, a hooker's green or a lighter citron green and that'll give you the same type of look. I just wanted to keep the leaves uh, kind of similar to the colors I already had in there. I just wanted to keep it fairly simple and want to add too many colors to this. So I decided to keep it in the same family as the bluebird in the background. Now I'm just doing some smaller little leaves, I guess you could call them. And I'm dipping my the tip of my brush into that light color, that um, buttermilk I think it's called. It gives you a two-tone leaf and it uh, looks nice and simple to do. And just doing a little bit of highlight on this one leaf. Okay, so with a fairly small round brush, or you could take a Posky in a gray color, and you can add a few more little twigs and uh, stems to your blueberries here and your leaves.
just fixing up the beak here with a little bit of that gray and then I'll put a little bit of the cayenne color underneath and do the little eye a little more uh, rounder Now this is just a pin. I find it easier to use this and dip it in my paint and then you can get a really fine mark for highlights and uh, such things. As long as it's not a really big line you're fine to use the pin. Um, now I will draw around the eye with a jelly roll pen. Now. You can only use the Jelly Roll pen if you're done that area of painting. You cannot paint over a Jelly Roll because it'll just wipe right off. And I'm putting the separation of the beak in with, uh, I believe those were, let me see, a Stedler pigment liner. And then I'm going to be taking a, I believe it's a Uniball, Uni pen it's called, um, for the feathers also to add some dark areas. It's always nice to do a little, just a few highlight um, feathers with the white pen. It just gives it a little more dimension, interest. Now I take it into that uh, orange area. Don't cover everything up solid you want to be able to see all the layers and that's what gives you a dimension in the bird feathers. And this is to add a little bit more depth by adding the sepia color and this works also in the blue areas where it would be a little bit darker. Kind of indicating the feathers there. Um, a little bit of a separation, maybe they're longer feathers on the wing. And I'm going to do a little bit on the bottom where the branch is also just to show a little bit more feathery overlap of the branch. There's the shadows in the uh, underneath of the tail. So I'm just doing downward lines.
and then on the underside of these uh, twigs, branches, just put a little bit more interest by shadowing one side. And there we have it. So I hope you'll give this a try and download the um, printable if you're a member and um, post it on Instagram or somewhere so I can have a look at what you've done. I'd love to see your work. So have a great day everyone and stay creative. <laughs>